<laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Andy Tabor. And I've been asked to give a speech tonight. While we can all assume this speech is to commemorate the upcoming holy matrimony between James and Kelly, bright and early tomorrow morning, I might add, <laughs> I'm going to have to slightly deviate from the program considering my history with the groom. <laughs> James Bradford Tabor, where do I even begin? Perhaps the most appropriate start would be my response to a hospital nurse's question about how I planned to interact with my baby brother when he was born. Quote, I'm going to throw him like a football. <laughs> While I never did get the satisfaction of actually ah. flinging James as far as I could when he was at his lightest. <laughs> I'm sure I made up for it with the tough love I administered during our formative years. You see, I felt this tough love approach was necessary because as the big brother, I saw it as my responsibility to mold James into the person I thought he should be. <laughs> and what better person to model James after than me? <laughs> the person who did everything right. <laughs> My accolades in sports and music, academics, obviously, among other things, <laughs> consistently set the bar high for James. Yet he simply refused to lean in and embrace my way of working to achieve the heights I had reached. Eventually, as I readied for college, I realized my job of shaping James into the best version of himself possible was coming to a close. As much as I would have loved to remain in my position of helicopter big brother, <laughs> I would have to continue to set the standard for James from afar. Over the course of those four years away, I was informed of James's every move by my parents. I left those calls shaking my head. At the latest in a long, long line of missteps, I felt James had made, bemoaning the fact that I was powerless to stop your onslaught of stupidity. <laughs> The peak of James's unchecked ridiculousness, which, unlike my father, I will go into, <laughs> was when he was in high school and created a Twitter account, Coppell Satire, where he posted observations of people and events in the Texas town where we grew up. His musings not only earned him Saturday school, but also a public confrontation with the football team after he sent incendiary tweets about the starting quarterback. Oh. Yeah. I, yes. I was also kept in the loop on how James's college search was going. Out of the plethora of options, his years of dedication to schoolwork had provided him, James eventually chose to attend the University of Rhode Island. It was a decision I vehemently disagreed with. <laughs> Considering one of his options was a school similar to, similar to my honorable Midwestern institution. <laughs> I will say though, James, picking the University of Rhode Island, was a decision that went a long way in helping our family reunify after my departure. <laughs> the reunion culminated in the summer of 2014, when upon graduating college, I decided to move in with my family until I found a job. <laughs> it was a fascinating summer, to say the least. My sense of self had grown exponentially thanks to being validated with a college degree. And so had my expertise on deciding what was right and wrong for James. <laughs> but what I failed to realize was that James had embraced a life without me and was thriving. <laughs> In this strange new world, James was playing the role of the big brother that I had always known. <laughs> you see, the big brother is supposed to be the life of the party. Have the biggest personality in the room and begrudgingly allow his sibling to tag along. That summer, as I tagged along with James and 
his comfort zone, surrounded by his friends, at his college and institution. This is the first time in my life that I felt like the younger brother. Of course, I didn't acknowledge Jesus Christ. And I did my best to hold on to power, which I felt was my big brother birthright. But throughout that summer, and even when I moved to glorious Washington, D.C. later that year, I felt the winds of change were inevitable. And James's independence would only grow. <laughs> the official date signifying the end of my reign was July 11, 2015. If you aren't as attuned as I am to this date and its meaning, let me clarify. July 11th, 2015 was the day James and Kelly started dating. <laughs> Prior to that day, I had shared candid thoughts with James about the pitfalls of entering into a serious relationship while in college. <laughs> Despite getting the utmost wisdom, James once again went against my best wishes <laughs> and decided to follow his heart. When James shared with our family that he was in fact dating one, Kelly Koshio, from Bristol, Rhode Island. You can only imagine what was going through my mind. <laughs> Confusion, frustration, anger, <laughs> jealousy. <laughs> my entire life, I prided myself in beating, uh, I mean, uh, setting a positive <laughs> example for James in everything. But in quite possibly the most important thing that both of us desperately wanted, James would always be victorious. He found his true love first. <laughs> this ultimate victory rocked me to my very core. <laughs> I was lonely, bitter, as I slog through the daily grind of being an adult, I want that vent for the rest of my life. Simultaneously, I was often reminded of James' happiness, <laughs> carefree college lifestyle, with every passing Instagram post. Despite Kelly's graciousness and victory, I was too much of a child to give her a legitimate chance as my successor. <laughs> to Kelly's credit, she always greeted my scowl with a cheery, Hey Andy! <laughs> it made me feel like I was part of whatever group I was joining, whether it was her friends or her family. So with all that being said, James and Kelly, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for teaching me what true love looks like. Believe it or not, as I was sitting off by myself at a 4th of July cook-off, or stewing quietly in my parents' living room, <laughs> I was actively studying how an amazingly special relationship was working. I credit your relationship for the one I was able to create with my wife, Patricia. Aww. Your ability to love each other unconditionally through ups and downs, truly sets the bar high for me when I look at my own relationship and myself. So thank you, congratulations, and I look forward to tomorrow when our family officially adds another member. I can't wait to start this new chapter fresh and together as one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>